presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to Morning. let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family and if I can get that money it's going to really mean a lot to my family so that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well listen man we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Folks, this is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on today. That this market really wants a higher price, it would see. We have the ES Mini trading up about 0.87% right now, just over that 5,000 mark. And I believe, give me one second, SPX were trading, yeah, 4,998 currently. That 5,000 mark uh, is pretty huge, at least psychologically speaking. Pretty interesting stuff going on. Again, I really think this market is just pushing higher prices, and they really want it as well. Let's look at the Russell, up about 0.15% today, uh, not as much as the other equities, uh, but still trading at 19.64. The NQs up about 1.12%. Uh, the Dow Futures trading up about 0.5% right now. The gold contract uh, staying pretty flat around this 2050 area. Of course, at the beginning of this month, I've been with you since then, but we were up at 2084, and then we came back down. We got a little bit of motion in the gold contract, uh, again, before coming back down to that 2050 area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Silver, uh, we're trading at 2230. Of course, some downward movement as well. A lot of this is kind of have to do with the dollar right now, right? The dollar, we had a huge tick up in it uh, above the 104 level. I think it was sitting comfortably at 104.41. Uh, but we're kind of tracing back down at least to 104.05 currently. Uh, let's take a look at poor copper, down about 1.2% today, uh, 373 on the contract. Again, this movement in the test it's doing is kind of looking at a 404 price for the copper futures contract, and we'll see how that shakes out going forward. Crude oil, 73.90. I think it, this whole market is super interesting, at least with oil, right? I mean, I'm surprised we aren't seeing these $95 levels. Uh, I was kind of bringing this up in the office. Um, of course, you had so much disruption in the Middle East. Um, Saudi Arabia is posturing themselves to try to reduce the amount of oil they're pushing out. Uh, of course, you have issues with Russia, disputes between Venezuela and I think Guyana over some of their um, areas over there that you can essentially pull oil out of. But you know, really, I mean, America, we are drilling. Uh, I think we just got a bunch of permits for the Permian Basin. Of course, tons of oil out there. Um, and they're going to install frack lines as well. Um, so when those oil rigs go off for whatever reason, uh, they can just, or let's say just price spikes uh, due to some kind of outside supply issue, uh, they can just turn on those fracking pipes and uh, it can stable out price. It's pretty fascinating, honestly. Um, long story short is we're going to be the top producer of oil um, for quite a while to come now. All right, we can take a look. Uh, Tesla, <clears throat> I mean, 10-year bond, let's, you know, when Powell spoke last Wednesday, we had a drop down to about 3.8% in the yield. I'm looking at Tesla right now, but um, <clears throat> that's what this was here. And we had a 3.8% in the yield, and now we've kind of come back up a little bit, uh, trading about 4.1% uh, rate on the 10-year. Tesla trading 188.41. Some okay news coming from them. Of course, quite a fall down uh, since the end of last year. Some demand for EVs are expected to go down. Uh, Tesla it costs a lot of money for them to produce some stuff. Uh, there was a huge kind of news story that came out, and it, it seemed to go away pretty quickly. But, you know, the batteries weren't charging in Chicago when they had that deep freeze. And that's a unique thing that's not going to just affect Tesla. I mean, it's going to affect any lithium-ion battery car. And that's more of an issue of, I guess, chemistry uh, than, you know, engineering. And so it'll be interesting to see how they try to pivot away from that. Furthermore, Tesla came out and said that the uh, whole market is in trouble regarding Baidu. 
and their production of EVs, uh, and if there's not some kind of government, I suppose, work or barriers to entry imposed, um, that the Chinese EVs could sweep the market because it could produce it so much cheaper. You had also, let me get the number on it, Ford uh, is going to start creating smaller and cheaper EVs, and Tesla will as well. And that's going to be super inter interesting to see come out. Um, I still think the infrastructure isn't fully there for the rest of the country to kind of adopt EVs. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a massive push um, from government agencies to kind of get these things rocking. And I, I think these cheaper prices um, will kind of help in the coming years. I think this year is going to be pretty tough uh, for the automotive industry anyways. Uh, you had so much purchasing the last few years. You have a lot of people currently defaulting on auto loans. We'll just talk a little bit about going forward. Um, but this could be cause uh, for at least some green day in Tesla. Steel Dynamics, yeah, up 4.1% today. Just a really neat stock. Uh, again, I talk about it every time, but uh, very nice. I wonder if we're going to start uh, creating a new trading bounds between this 110 area. Again, you have this shoot up. The highest we had was 128. That was in December 18th. Uh, traversal back down to the 110 area, and then it seems like we're moving back again. That last day with volume, we had a high on that day of about 127.70. Uh, so we'll see if we test that again. Again, if that happens, for me, I'm going to be watching a movement back down to that 110 area and then a rejection at that level and uh, see if we can see a new kind of trading channel form uh, for Steel Dynamics. Of course, the dollar, as I was just saying, trading at 104.05. Uh, again, kind of lagging with the metal market there. QQQs trading at 432.46, up 114. Google up 0.95%. Meta. <clears throat> A lot of interesting stuff going on with Meta that we can talk about going forward. Uh, of course, everyone loved the dividend. Everyone loved the stock buyback. I mean, who doesn't if you're an investor? Uh, a super unique challenge going in to this presidential election, and Meta has been, uh, at least Zuckerberg, has been pretty vocal about it, is the risk that AI plays, right? So misinformation, um, and then really, you know, in a way, making kind of subtle, how do I say it, like, Kind of, kind of more like subtle propaganda in a sense, right? Like you have all these different interests online. You can just be random groups of people even, and they can use AI and and really get their you know perspective out there and, and kind of get what they want to say. Now you get into sketchy situations where they're releasing um, misinformation. So Meta is going to be really focusing on that in the coming election cycle, and it'll be a pretty much a case study to see how the rest of these large tech firms that, that have social media platforms should be addressing this going forward. Uh, furthermore, Meta also said, uh, Zuckerberg said, that they're going to stay very slim and focus a lot on AI, um, which again, I think is pretty good for the company going forward. Um, we have earnings today with Disney. We'll talk a little bit about them when we get back. Folks, stay right there. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, yeah, we were talking a little bit about uh, the production of oil in the Permian Basin, kind of what they're doing, and then Jambalaya in the den. Again, thank you for sending this, Jambalaya. This is awesome. Uh, you have the governor of Louisiana saying that they're going to work to increase gas production uh, in Louisiana as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping this really does create cheaper gas prices going forward. I mean, this is some pretty good stuff. All right. Anyways, let's take a look going forward. I think we were on Disney. 98.75. This is a troubled equity or has been. In the recent past, um, they're having issues with their streaming. They're having issues with some of the content they're producing. Uh, you had the CEO come out, okay, Bob Iger. He came out and said that they're trying to pivot. You know, really, I think what he's trying to do is just overhaul Disney and, and how they're going to operate, right? So he came out and said recently that the writing that they've been doing uh, for all their movies have been focused way too much on social commentary and, and trying to get some kind of moral across. Now, of course, Disney movies, since, I mean, even when I was a kid and I had like the VHS Beauty and the Beast or whatever, there's always some, obviously, you know, moral in the story, right? But, he, but what he's saying is that they're just sacrificing good storytelling to try to signal some kind of belief or position or opinion and how that needs to stop. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of you know, pushback he gets from his writers on that. Uh, furthermore, they're going to start cracking down on password sharing the same way that Netflix did. Um, some big, let me, let me pull this up real quick. If I can find the article. Okay. All right, so, oh, come on now. I'll try to find it on the next break. Essentially, you have the different interest groups that are involved with Disney um, are suggesting a lot of different approaches, essentially, uh, which I think is unique. Yet Blackwell essentially suggesting that Disney should kind of try to split into three separate entities, right? You have your streaming entity, you have the real estate entity, which Blackwell is suggesting they essentially put into a REIT and just allow people to invest in it, which is a unique idea. And then obviously the theme park segment as well. Um, okay, here, we'll go over this. 
All right, so essentially they're reporting the fiscal first quarter results on Wednesday. Uh, the company will also post earnings a day after it announced it's going to work with ESPN, which would partner with Fox and Warner Brothers to launch a joint sports streaming service, which has been really huge for Fox as well. We can talk about that. Uh, in the past few months, Disney has been steadily addressing investor concern over streaming losses and its slumping share price. That involves essentially the, the password crackdown that they're trying to go into. Um, the company has started to crack down on the password sharing. Um, it increased its cost-cutting measures by $2 billion to a target of $7.5 billion uh, and unveiled plans to invest roughly $60 billion in its parks business. Uh, Disney's stock has climbed 9% this year, which has been great for holders. Uh, yeah, I think it'll just be hard to see. I think they were stretched very thin. I, I think that they had some poor management for a while before Idra came back in. Focusing on the parks is going to be massive for them. I went to Epcot recently, and I, I don't, I'm not a Disney guy or anything like that, uh, but I did go to Epcot uh, for a birthday, and it was fantastic, and I had a great time, and I spent way too much money at it. Um, I, I think driving visitations to those are going to be huge. The, the streaming service I just get weird with, right? I mean, obviously they have massive publishing rights with Star Wars and Avatar films, um, I, I think it's Avengers as well. Um, but consolidating all of that and putting it into its own streaming platform, I, I don't know, uh, made a ton of sense. Anyways, we'll see what kind of shakes out with that. Uh, of course, we'll kind of cover what's going on uh, with their earnings on TFNN as well. Let's talk a little bit about Roblox today. Let me see. They popped up quite a bit, 11.96% today, just because they didn't lose as hard. Uh, they reported results for the fiscal fourth quarter Wednesday that beat consensus estimates on the top and bottom lines. Uh, losses per share were realized at 52 cents versus 55 cents. And uh, revenue, uh, also bookings, that which includes sales and uh, deferred revenue, totaled in about $1.13 billion versus the $1.08 billion expected, which is pretty solid. Again, one of the major developers, this is essentially what Zuckerberg was basing in a lot of ways the metaverse off of, right? Roblox, you can go in, you can build all these different kind of worlds. Uh, people can get into these worlds. They, they pay for entry. They pay for different kind of goods or items in the game. Uh, but this is such a massive company. I mean, Roblox, listen to this. The reported full year revenue of $3.5 billion. Uh, versus essentially 3.41 billion. The company's full year loss per share was only 187 compared to 191. I mean, you know, three and a half billion for a video game company is, uh, and let's say to a video game company with a unique title, right? Like, I mean, you see things like this uh, from Activision, Blizzard, uh, EA2, who has the rights to publish FIFA games. I mean, they obviously get a huge amount, but I mean, Roblox is, is its own concept. And this is really just a network of different people Getting, to, getting together, creating different experiences for each other. And again, it has its own economy. This is what it's selling, these, these Robux. Um, so, and this is a move on pretty high volume as well. Not bad for that stock uh, at all. They're saying, yep, they're seeing strength in international uh, as well as national platforms. The company provided guidance for 2024 in the first fiscal quarter. Uh, the company expects first quarter bookings between 910 million and 940 million and a net loss ranging from 342 to 347. It guided uh, to full year 2024 bookings between $4.1 billion and uh, 4.28. That's obviously higher than the consensus range, I think, which was sitting around 3.4. Um, anyways, this company is going to continue to grow. We see people still spending a lot of money, especially on things in the virtual world. Um, Pretty fantastic for Roblox. And it's just unique too, because I think this is, again, one of those companies that, you know, kind of embodies this new economy we're going into, right? I mean, you know, you tell, I think like, if I could tell my granddad, right, that this company is making that much money just because it has its own e-economy inside of it that structures itself out the way that the, you know, the market does, uh, I, I think he would just be blown away by that. And it really is pretty impressive. So, all right, let's shift over to talking about vehicles a little bit. Look at Ford Motors, up about 6.09% today. We'll talk some about that. 
Uh, the Ford Motor, Co Motor, uh, Motor Company is working on inexpensive small electric vehicles to stem its electric vehicle losses and take on Tesla and Chinese automakers. Chief Executive Officer Jim Farley revealed the plans to analysts Tuesday after the automaker announced adjusted earnings per share of just 29 cents as more than double the 13 cents analysts expected on average. First quarter revenue of 46 billion surpassed the 40 billion analysts expected, which is pretty crazy. Ford is recalibrating its EV strategy to move away from the large, expensive EVs because high prices are biggest barriers to convincing mainstream car buyers to go electric. Interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that along with Toyota and Tesla when we come back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Okay, before we went to the break, we are talking about Ford. Uh, essentially, all right, this is the whole picture, right? They're decreasing spending on EV vehicles. I think we spoke about that last time that I was on. The money that they are putting forward to it are going to be focusing a lot on these cheaper vehicles. And this is a way for them to essentially compete with China and, and Tesla. Simultaneously, they'll be increasing the production of newer gas vehicles, but they're going to be using this, the, the profit from those, to really fund a long-term switch over to EV. I think this is neat for them. Instead of just throwing out the EV, because I, I, I do believe... 
that EV is going to be the future. And again, that's not like a, a logical, not, not that it's not logical, that's not like I, I believe that's the right or wrong thing to do, it's just you can see all these different forces are pushing for a world that is using EV cars. And I mean, you're gonna see China flood, I mean, they're already flooding Europe with these cars. When I, in 2019, uh, before all this kind of talk started really taking off in the media, I was in Belgrade, Serbia, and you had Chinese guys there, business people, who were trying to sell EV, now this wasn't just for personal use, this was going to be uh, you know, trucks uh, for, for manual labor and all that, but they were there giving these super low prices on uh, EV vehicles. And that is going to expand out and it already is in the general consumer market. They're gonna be able to outprice anyone else. So Ford being able to kind of scale back all of the investments that they were putting in while still focusing on kind of incremental, essentially uh, improvements, on their EV technology, so then when the time really comes to focus in on EV, I think is actually posing them uh, to be pretty strong when that when that hammer really does drop. Anyways, trading up six percent right now. Let's take a look at some more companies in the vehicle area. Take a look at Toyota. One second. All right, so up about two percent today. Um, nice little gap up. Uh, on February 6th, that's a pretty high volume as well. All right, so essentially they're doing the gas hybrid um, and it the stock is soaring on that basically because it's working pretty well. Let me take a look if I can get any more information on you. Sorry, computer is loading a little bit. Well, when I can get that loaded, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Let's pivot over to GM as well. They are poised to spend uh, quite a bit of money going forward, essentially into the production of these vehicles as well. They're up only uh, moderately today. Of course, had a big jump up on January 30th. Uh, they're planning on spending $19 billion over roughly the next decade to source critical materials uh, for their use in the vehicle batteries. I'm from LG Chem. Long-term supply contracts will see LG Chem supply GM with more than 500,000 tons of cathode materials uh, from 2026 to 2035. The contract is likely one of the largest, if not the largest, EV supply deals uh, that GM has. Uh, excuse me, that GM has signed. I'm really curious on this because I think every year these new iterations of EV vehicles are going to have better tech, and so I would be kind of interested to see a little bit more. And I, I couldn't find anything that had the, you know, any, anything in this exact language. Um, I think one of the major problems you have right now is that EV batteries weigh a ton, okay? I think that there are gonna be better methods, even in like five years of doing these lithium ba batteries, whether they're solid state or, or something new like we talked about using chitin or something. Um, and what I get concerned is when you see some, a plan this long and, uh, with this much money, if there's no ability for that good that's being delivered to adapt, I think GM could probably be uh, in a hard spot. Let's take a look at this a little bit more. Long-term supplier contract will see LG Chem supply GM with more than 500,000 tons of cathode materials. That's nickel, cobalt, manganese, and aluminum from 2026 through 2035. That supply would be enough to power 5 million units of EVs with ranges of more than 300 miles. The cathode materials from the LG plant that's currently under construction in Tennessee will supply GM's joint venture battery cell plants in North America, including three joint venture plants in LG. So again, this is just uh, to try to show everyone that EV is going to be the future, or at least all these major players see it as such as well. Uh, pretty cool to see. All right, let's take a look at Uber. Finally profitable. <laughs> Uh, so they had a big jump as well. Let's talk about this. Uh, Uber reported fourth quarter results Wednesday that beat analyst estimates on the top and bottom lines. Uh, here's how the company did. 66 cents versus 17 cents and 9.9 .9 billion versus 9.76 billion. Uber reported net income of 1.4 billion uh, compared with 595 million in the same quarter last year. Uber's net income includes a 1 billion net tailwind thanks to unrealized gains from revaluations, excuse me, revaluations uh, of its equity investments. The company's revenue for the 
uh, quarter was up 15% from the same quarter last year. Uber's gross bookings came in at $36.6 billion. The CEO said 2023 marked a year of sustainable, profitable growth for Uber. Uh, yeah. We continue to see consumer strength and especially consumer strength as it relates to services, which I think is super uh, interesting because you have something going on currently with McDonald's and Taco Bell to a lesser extent where people are complaining about McDonald's said this, right? Essentially, people were complaining about how expensive McDonald's food is getting, and it has been for a long time. They tried to kind of reposture themselves as a more quality over quantity uh, type company when they're coming out with all those artisan or, you know, artist inspired chicken sandwiches that were super expensive. And everyone's like, what the heck, man? Um, I don't go to McDonald's to buy something like that, right? But that's kind of what they were pursuing. And now, with just the increase in inflation, I mean, you've seen out to eat costs increase 5%, where at home costs are increasing something like 1.7%, like roughly in that area. And McDonald's said, you know, going forward, that they're going to see a problem because the people who are making enough money to eat out still, and we're seeing people still going out in droves, um, aren't going to eat at McDonald's. But the people who usually eating McDonald's in that socioeconomic bracket, that's people making $45,000 and under, um, aren't going to eat there because the prices are getting so expensive because of inflation. So it's interesting, again, you're, you're really seeing a stark kind of um, economic class thing uh, essentially forming, right? You have people who aren't getting impacted by inflation in really any way. It, it's not even like they're slowing down on going out. It's just these classes are ramping up going out, going to concerts, uh, all these kind of events, and, and you're seeing other people having to really reel in a ton uh, from inflation. Anyways, that's kind of beyond the point. Um, Uber's mobility segment reported $5.5 billion in revenue, up 34% from the year earlier, while its delivery segment reported $3.1 billion, up 6%. They're also uh, going to see increased competition in Dubai, uh, which will be kind of interesting to see how that impacts them going forward. All right, let's talk a little bit about housing. Well, we have a break, but when we get back, we'll talk a little bit about housing and how demand is stalling out as the mortgage rates continue to move higher. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Okay, welcome back. Folks, before we went to the break, we were talking about um, essentially what's going on with mortgage rates and housing demand. Let's take a look at this. Housing demand uh, is ground to a halt last week as mortgage rates inch closer to 7%, squeezing many would-be buyers out of the market ahead of the pivotal spring season. The Mortgage Bankers Association Index of Mortgage Applications rose 3.7% last week uh, compared with the previous week. According to new data published Wednesday, that uh, increase was entirely due to home buyers who refinanced their mortgages. Weird. Uh, applications for a mortgage to purchase a home fell 1% compared with the previous week as high mortgage rates continue to limit housing supply. Uh, application volume remains down 19% compared with the same time last year. Of course, this is Kind of the point of these higher rates, you're supposed to be getting a cooling effect. Uh, purchase activity has been strong to start 2024 compared to the final quarter of 2023. However, activity is still weaker than a year ago because of low housing supply. The data also showed that the average rate of the popular 30-year loan rose to 6.8% from 6.78% for the previous week. Huh. However, that does not take into consideration the sharp jump in mortgage rates that took place in January. Jobs report came out uh, as that came in much stronger than expected. Rates on the 30-year loan surged 29 basis points last Friday, uh, the largest one-day jump in more than a year. Okay. And, and essentially, too, I mean, you know, in a lot of ways, this is going to obviously push down the price of housing. Um, by how much is kind of hard to say. But I think that will be a positive overall, and we'll see kind of how that fixes itself going forward. We talk about a little bit on the auto loan delinquencies. Let's take a look, too, on that. A growing number of Americans are falling behind on their car payments, an ominous sign. Okay, is it, though? Let's see. Car loan delinquencies tumbled in the early days of the pandemic as the government sent trillions in stimulus money. Uh, however, delinquencies have progressively ticked higher as sky-high prices for used and new cars alike forced consumers to take out bigger loans and drain their savings account. At the end of December, about 7.69% of auto debt moved into delinquency, the highest level since 2010. That's very interesting. Uh, it's a little bit perplexing while we're seeing these increases in delinquency rates, particularly for certain types of borrowers. I think the price of cars is one clue that there might be some stress in that space. I mean, that's what everyone was talking about for a while. And this is, I mean, look at this. The average cost of a new car is around nearly $50,000. And it's only going to get worse from there. And, you know, people were still buying cars. That's the insane thing. Like it was, they were still buying cars and financing them at these levels. And I think that signals that they can keep creating cars and uh, producing them for that kind of cost. Okay, so while this price is down about 2.4% uh, from the beginning of 2023, it remains 1.8% higher than the same month three years ago before the inflation crisis Began. I haven't seen any data on what Ford um, or Tesla is trying to produce their cars for, but I can't imagine, again, it's anything significantly cheaper. I mean, I would say probably like a 35000 is probably roughly what a cheap car is going to be, a 38000 Anyways, I think things are just going to continue to get more and more um, expensive on the, on the long run. It is nice because wages have been keeping up, but again, I get concerned that this is 
we're seeing like a V-shaped movement in the economy. Of course, there are always people who make more and people who make less and so on, and that just creates this economic strata that we see. Um, but I mean, what do you say to someone who makes $45,000 a year and that doesn't necessarily change in the coming years? And uh, the new cars are about $50,000 and used cars are gonna be expensive too. I mean, anyways, I think that uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see what happens with that. And I, I think that will probably cause issues going forward. I wanna talk about what I like to talk about usually, which is cybersecurity. And uh, let's take a look at Palo Alto Networks, up about 6.71% today. Um, even Fortinet, let me see, is this this ticker? Yeah, it is. Up 3.6% today. And then CrowdStrike, I think that this is the ticker for CrowdStrike. Beautiful, wow, 5.4. Listen, this stuff is going pretty nuts. Let's take a look. Uh, Palo Alto really is the one that I like looking at. This company has done so well over the past six months. And again, I, I think this proves how relevant investment in cybersecurity is, and it's going to continue. Really, I think Fortinet is massive as everything transitions, uh, especially in the OT sector. So, you know, what IT would be um, in, in a factory or production setting, Fortinet really has the, the grip around all of that, especially the security aspect behind it, which is different than IT security. Super interesting to kind of get into if, if you're not familiar with that. Uh, and then Palo Alto is, is you know, used by governments and all this kind of stuff. Uh, anyways, you talk a little bit more reporting. It's first quarter results Tuesday after the close. Fortinet beat expectations. One second, we'll pull up Fortinet. Uh, instead of 43 cents per share uh, on profit on 1.41 billion in sales, the company earned 0.51 on 1.42 billion. Okay. Fortinet's guidance for the first quarter and for 2024 as a whole holds, um, I don't think it's gonna be too bad. I mean, this analyst doesn't like it, but I, I really think, here, okay, for instance, what I can talk about and kind of give you an example of why this is gonna be really interesting is something, uh, in cybersecurity, there's something called uh, shadow devices. And what that is, is it, it's something that creates a blind spot in the security system of a network because it's brought from outside of the network. And it's not necessarily malicious or anything like that. It's just something that is sitting on the network and that could be a laptop, it could be a cell phone, um, you know, anything that connects to the internet uh, that that isn't controlled or seen by the IT network. And AI is that, right? I mean, listen, let's look at what happened with Samsung, right? Where they had that hack um, maybe about, I think it was like a year ago or something, but the developers for some of their new OS were using AI to write script for them or write code for them. Uh, that's a huge no-no. And because what happened is hackers were somehow able to lift that understand what AI, what ChatGPT wrote, and then we're able to compromise the devices based on that. Think about this, right? Like you have your own company, or let's say like even a financial firm, and uh, you have all this sensitive information, maybe like an accounting or maybe a business deal that you're trying to do, and you have some young analyst who's plugging in all that data into ChatGPT. I mean, that those servers aren't on-prem, right? I mean, maybe a lot of cloud isn't on-prem, but like that's not, there's nothing that really saves you from that just going out into a random database somewhere, right? And this is the problem that you're gonna start seeing. And so what do I think comes from this? Well, one, I think you get companies like Fortinet who are able to develop uh, things on the network that are able to detect that a little bit better and kind of shut that down. Of course, that's also up to IT at what they implement. Uh, but then furthermore, I think this is where you get companies like Google and Meta who come in big time and are able to essentially give like uh, what I would call like a like the seed to a, a bonsai tree, right? And you can sit there and you have this, this bare bones AI and you're able to develop it on-prem within the company in a way that fits your needs. All of the data is secure, it operates the way you need to and this is gonna be a really interesting thing in AI. I mean, ChatGPT, I think, is going to get, as we know it, is gonna get knocked out of the workforce in the next four years because of the security risk. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, welcome back, folks. We're talking about AI before we went to the break. Let's take a look at Palantir up 7.5% today. Uh, Truth to the words that the wilder the haircut of the CEO, the better the tech company. Alex Karp has been running this company in one of the best ways possible. Let's take a look at here. Uh, Palantir's share surged uh, more than 90% after hours trading. Uh, that was on Monday. Uh, earnings were $0.08 cents adjusted versus $0.08 cents expected. And then the revenue, this is really where they were hitting it hard. Uh, 6.08 versus 602 million. Uh, the revenue in the first quarter increased 20% to $608 million versus uh, $508 million versus the year prior. Uh, the company reported net income of $93.4 million, or $0.04 cents per share, compared with $30.9 million. Wow. Uh, in a letter to shareholders, Palantir CEO Alex Karp said the company's expansion and growth have never been greater, especially as demand for large language models in the U.S. continues to be unrelenting. Uh, military deals help with that, too. Palantir has been rolling out its artificial intelligence platform, and Carp said the company carried out nearly 600 pilots uh, with the technology in 2023. It's about a six uh, times increase. Pretty nuts. Uh, Palantir said it expects to report between 612 million and 616 million revenue during the first quarter, and forecast revenue uh, for the full year of 2.65 billion. Yeah, and I think, I think for defense, Palant, that's really where Palantir is going to shine. <clears throat> Obviously, the consumer market is huge, but if they can continue to secure those contracts and 
all of the military AI is being solely built on kind of Palantir tech, like, I mean, you just, you get locked in with that. I mean, it's massive for Palantir. And thankfully, you know, I, I've held this stock for so long and it beat me up and I didn't let it, I didn't let it win. I don't even know when I last, yeah, I think I bought it like around here, <laughs> yeah, so long ago. And then this happened, but thankfully we're moving back towards that cost basis. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I think Tom will be back tomorrow. Uh, regardless, we have Tommy O'Brien on tomorrow at 9 a.m. And then we have Basil, Steve Rose, I believe Larry, and then we'll see what happens. Folks, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night.